First, put the parts of the connector onto the cable before you assemble the end. So you put this piece first on. This is a, a Neutrik brand. It's the, uh, the industry standard. They're really good connectors, easy to work with. Um, so put that piece on. Put this piece on. Skinny side first. And this has a split in it, actually, so you can either squeeze it to get it on or pull it open. Whatever. You'll get it on there. And there are little notches on the side of this where it'll fit onto here, which you'll see. Um, I like to reuse these connectors because there's no reason you can't and they end up uh, tinned and ready to go. The only thing you need to do is get the old solder off. The way I do it at least, some people actually fill these little tabs with solder first and then reheat it and put the cable in, but it's not how I do it. You could do it however you want. but So cut off the wires and get rid of all the, uh, the plastic insulation because that'll just melt and uh, release toxic fumes and it's no good. So one important thing is always always obsessively clean the tip of your your soldering iron when you're working. Every time every single time you pick it up clean it off real thoroughly and I wouldn't leave the soldering iron sitting on for a half hour and not use it because then the tip just oxidizes and it doesn't work as well. So normally I'd, I'd grab this connector when I'm reusing used ones, I'd grab it with a pair of pliers or something and I'd smack it, I'd heat the solder and smack it on the edge of, end of a garbage can or something, but I'm going to do it right here just so you can see it and definitely wear safety glasses because the solder could splash up and hit you in the eye and that would not be good, so um, heat it up, smack, and it just comes right out. Do it with all three connectors. And you could definitely look in there, make sure you don't see any solder. Number three, you don't want to overheat any of this stuff. This is plastic, and the insulation on the wires is plastic, and it does, it will melt if you heat it too much. So give it just as little heat as possible to, to, to properly melt everything on there. So, okay, so I like to get a nice sharp razor blade. You can get a fancy stripper if you want, but this works just as well. Uh, about a little less than an inch. Just gently push down, roll it. You don't want to press too hard because then you cut the strands and they're there for a reason. You want all of them usually. Sometimes you get cable with shielding that's crazy thick. But So most cables are kind of simple. You could just... Um, unroll it or however it's wound around there twist it together so it's nice and tight you don't want strands you know splaying out and shorting <laughs> shorting out so and you get this filler which is sometimes like a cotton sometimes it's you know, like nylon or whatever the heck this is pull it tight snip it off strip off maybe I guess three sixteenths of an inch or so of the insulation on here this happens to be a 22 gauge wire um, certain cable the, the shield is, is braided around it and it's nearly impossible to get off so you need to get like a dental pick or a, an, an awl or something real sharp and just sort of gently pick away at it and un, un, uh, braid all the the shielding that's around it. So, all right. So, get your cable. I like this little handy alligator clip gizmo. It holds everything in place for you. So, get your solder. You're tinning the wire so that the strands all stay together and they're not. strands together with the solder. Sometimes I'll flick it a little bit just to get globs off, but I'd be careful not to get it in your face or in your eyes. <laughs> Alright, so the shield actually ends up longer, just the way it's wrapped around. So 
So I cut it so it's about the same length as the other ones, maybe a tiny, tiny bit less, tiny bit shorter. So the pin, the pins are universal. There's three pins on here, one, two, and three, and there's always they're always labeled. So I start with pin one personally, which is your shield. <clears throat> maybe clip it on the back of this little tab here, whatever it takes, so it's not going to move on you. So the shield goes on pin one. It's a, it's a standard. I think in Europe they do it a little differently, but we're not in Europe, so um, slide this up so that it's the, the females are really deep, so you just need to set it in there just about so that it's even with the uh, <coughs> the edge of the plastic. And so basically, you just touch the soldering iron onto both the tab and the wire and see this is not very steady so I need to clip it in there a little better so you touch it on both the tab and the, the cable and hold it for a second just to warm it up but not too long so that you're melting everything <laughs> so it's pretty quick. I mean, it's, it's I've got a lot of practice, so it might not go smoothly. They don't always go smoothly. So there's that, and it takes about five seconds for it to to cool off enough so it doesn't fall off if you move it. And make sure you don't move it while it's cooling down, because then it doesn't doesn't make contact properly, and it could fall off. It's called a cold solder, which it's pretty useless. The cable, the wire, will just fall right off if you bump it or whatever. So. <clears throat> so do the same thing here so the darker color always goes on the center pin which is pin 3 it's usually black or blue this is very important to get that right <laughs> um, so we'll do the same thing heat it up and touch the solder onto the iron touch everything if you can touch the tip of the soldering iron and the cable and the connector just sort of get everything heated and get it to flow in there as nice as you can this you may have to twist around or finagle a little bit so pin 2 which is the opposite side of pin 1 your hot goes it's usually red or white set it in there so that's you don't have any bare wire hanging past the edge of this tab because then there's a slight chance it could short out so again same thing hold it for a second sometimes if you lift it up and put it back down it'll flow in better it's just kind of hard to <clears throat> control sometimes where it's going to flow and how it flows but so that's that and it will be very hot for a good minute or so so that looks good make sure there's no globs make sure every it's there's enough solder in there that fills up the whole the whole tab make sure there's no strands that are kind of not you know it's kind of off on their own everything's nice and tight all right so slide this piece up and you will see this little little grooves on the sides of it it falls in there just nice there's several different styles of these over the years they've changed them so you have to just kind of look at it and line up sometimes there's just a little a little notch on this side of it which lines up with this tab here <coughs> same thing with these there's there's little grooves and little bumps where it won't let you slide it on unless it's prop you know sit, situated properly but this tab this button here lines up with this tab because it's basically a little spring clip sometimes you have to flip it over to drop the tab down for it to slide on but go all the way down make sure everything is, is seated properly slide this up it should go pretty pretty easily if you have to really crank it down with a lot of force it's probably cross-threaded and you want to so and I tighten these pretty good and uh, probably grab a cable test yeah you definitely should test them because stuff happens I already did the other side of this earlier. This is just 
the short six foot jumper. So put them in there. Should be three, three, three pins. Pin one is good. No other lights are lighting up. Pin two is good. Pin three, and there's nothing connected to four. So, so that looks good. Um, that's it.